Okay, good evening. Um, I hope the, hope the audio is working okay today. <clears throat> okay, so I sent two papers today along with the, with the general journal entry from last time. Actually, I think I'm missing a page here. Okay, so the objective today is number one, to do a review on the payroll. Um, after all the back and forth, the people did not have to be able to activate payroll and I shared a copy of my QuickBooks file. I hope most of you were able to get that QuickBooks file downloaded and started with a password that was posted time and again. Um, so we'll be able to do payroll and we'll be do over step number 11, which is what I did last time and step number 14, because uh, 12 and 13, we're not gonna undo. I already created the employee, we'll leave him there, but I'll delete the check that I made to Pinchas Tadras. We'll delete the check for Yaka Fishbein and in that way, we'll be able to go through the process of creating checks together for, and then that will also solve your question about the balances being okay, because you're working with my file and I'm gonna also delete my checks in the process and we're gonna recreate it again. We're also going to create a schedule. We have a Mrs. Fine who we created as a secretary. She never got paid. So we're gonna give her, she's gonna get a weekly paycheck and Mr. Fishbein is gonna get a bi-weekly paycheck. So we're gonna do this step by step. And I just like to reiterate that no, when you're learning QuickBooks, that are, we have a very varied class of uh, for at least 40 year age, range of ages, as well as uh, different industries that people are working in and no one knows in which office they will work in. <clears throat> it's possible you will be in the lawyer's office who's doing closings. You might be uh, working a store. And the, uh, the idea is that the assumption is that when someone comes into a work into an office, they know this, the program called QuickBooks. Maybe it's, uh, you know, this, there's uh, some tweaks that they don't know. There's a more advanced features. There's different settings and preferences, but the basic idea is that it's not just like, you know, learning one page of the Gemara and spending the time of it and getting all the skills and then the, the volume doesn't make a difference, you know, whether you go fast through 10 pages or you do a long time one page, but you're gonna get the skills. The, the skills of QuickBooks is, is in every single um, part of it. You know, we're not the person who's just, there are companies that only have, that have account receivables that people collect. You know, their job is to collect the receivables from customers. The assumption is those people know QuickBooks is there in the department of collecting receivables. Um, you, you shouldn't assume that, okay, I know how to enter, inv create invoices and I can receive the payments. I'm good to go. I can get hired. I can put on my resume. I know QuickBooks. Well, uh, what happens when the bills come in and you have to pay the bills? So there are similarities between customers and vendors. They, could be some, in some cases that mirror Im images. One is account receivable, one is account payable. One is creating invoices, one is creating bills. As you saw in inventory, inventory is a different part, it's a different skill. And who is to say you're not gonna be in the warehouse taking care of inventory? And you know, just, mo just because most of the companies decide, or I should say a, lot of, a big percentage of companies decide to outsource the payroll, who is to say that your company will not decide they want payroll and you might be passed over for, you know, on your job, if you go to an interview and you say, no, I don't know how to do payroll. So it's important to know how to do customers, how to do, how to do employees, how to do payroll. You know, maybe the idea of timesheets is, is, is not in every company, but it's pretty much, uh, you, it's, a, it's, it's as much, it's advisable to know how to do payroll. And even though we only spend one or two classes on it, like today, we're going to brush up on it. If you, if, you, if you don't have, if you feel you need some more time, ask the questions with you and I come to, to the 
prep classes for the certification. You could be assured that there will be questions on inventory and on payroll and on adjustments, which and on reconciliation. All these things are necessary to get through the certification. I'm not trying to overload you with information that's not needed. And the assumption is that, again, you know, we're putting 36 hours into our class. Uh, we'll cover most of the ideas that are necessary. Of course, the, 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 the larger the class size and the more questions from students, obviously it will slow down a little pace. And that's why we built in a few extra hours as well. And uh, in the course itself, and as well as in the certification for those that need extra support. Okay, with that uh, uh, introduction, let's go over hopefully to uh, payroll. I'm gonna go to Pinchas Tadras. I'm gonna double click the check and delete it. I believe if I just tell you this, you could do it. So uh, follow the instructions and step a lot, uh, before in payroll. This is class 13, the review of payroll. Go to the employees and delete the two checks of Pinchas Tadras and Mr. Fishbein. You don't have to watch me do it. You can do it yourself on your software if you have it open. Or you could watch me and I'll give you actually 20 seconds to, uh, or an extra minute to delete the check on your own computer. So we'll go here and we'll go delete. Are they should delete the paycheck. Yes, we, we open the paycheck and we delete the paycheck. And we're gonna close this again. We're gonna go to Yaga Fishbein, paycheck, open the paycheck and go to the top to delete. And we are back to wherever your balance sheets and P&Ls were before I created the checks. I'm not gonna go over to the P&L, but you can assume if we took out the payroll expense, then it's not there. We took out paychecks. Okay, let me just see the q and I'm gonna to try to avoid going, I'm gonna to try to look from a different device, just because I know the, the black boxes are annoying to you and to myself and um, I was not able to get rid of it I, on my device. Um, whoever wants to stay on the Q&A, not in the class time, and, and we can work it out. I'll be happy to spend the time to get that black box off. Okay. If you don't see Mrs. Fine, then you're not in my QuickBooks file. That's the answer to anonymous. Okay, again, I'm gonna type my answer to, what, to everyone, even though info one at we do it. Okay, that's the password to that file. Okay. So I guess uh, we spend, we're filling the time by responding to questions. So those that are not listening to the questions will be able to, uh... okay. I'm gonna assume by now that everyone already deleted the two checks. Now we're going to uh, create payroll checks. So let's go to pay um, employees. Okay, you can click the employees. Actually, not employee is actually employee center I wanted to go to. Let's go to the right. Okay, get that out of the way. Fine. Employees, and we're going to pay employees. Okay, again, employee, drop down, pay employees. Who do you want to pay? So the first thing is we're going to we're going back to the class of six five. That was the date. So we're going to change the pay period. Um, Pinchas Tadras is the first paycheck that we did. So we're gonna click the pay the, the calendar of, of um, June 5th. For those that want to try and then see how it works afterwards, they could not look at my screen. I'll be um, narrating it. They could try doing it on their own screen. And we could see how it goes if they feel that they're getting it, they're learning it better that way by doing it on screen. 
from the get-go. So pay period ends June 5th. That's number one. And the check day will also be June 5th. Okay. So we're gonna collect June 5th and June 5th. Those are the pay period end and check date. And we'll go back to Pinchas Tadras. We're gonna click him. And if you recall, we said last time he had done five units of work for uh, Flonia Money. We already made Flonia Money's invoices already. He's done. But Pinchas Tadras needs to get paid his five units. And we could already, we already anticipated that if he gets paid 40 hours, $40 per unit, his check will be $200. And when we went down to continue on, on the bottom right of the screen, go to continue. Let's see if I might have a signed class. Okay. So we I we I had already enabled class and I also um, said it should prompt me for classes. In this case, we, you know, we want we want to check locations for class, but we're not going to do this now. That we 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 might or we might not get to class in this course. Uh, maybe we'll we'll just touch upon it at the end or in the review in the review sessions. It's not um, something which is which we're going to uh, digress to it right now. Okay, so now we have a gross pay for Pinchas Tadras. Let's see what I'm going to get rid of this um, view. Open one dollar scale. Good. Now I'm back. Okay, I'm, I'm just resizing my screen. Okay, so we have Pinchas Tadras. His gross pay is two hundred dollars. His taxes is twenty-two dollars and forty-three cents. And we open the detail, open paycheck detail. What are those taxes? He's going to start screaming, I deserve $200, and you're going to give me 177 177 Why are you shortchanging me? The employer taxes, he doesn't care so much about. Okay, you know, the employer's paying it. And if you notice, the employer taxes right here is even more than the taxes withheld from the employee. It costs the employer more to add to the check than what we withhold from the employee. It's going to open the paycheck detail. That's the, that's the, uh, that's the tab that's underneath the check options. Okay. If you open the paycheck detail, we said we see here there's different types of uh, withholdings on the on the employee end, and for purposes of now, I'm going to delete anything which is not the th the required Social Security and Medicare. And this and New York disability. So we're going to delete New York Yonkers. We're not Yonkers, so we're not going to do that. Actually, have to press zero. This deleting is not going to help, but paid family leave. Um, I see, well, that's actually in box 14 of your W 2s. You have a couple of these deductions from uh, NYPL or NYD, so we'll, you know, you have the family will leave that they were taking off. The New York resident will make them a zero. Federal withholding will make zero. And at least we increase this check. Okay, so the, what are the four things being withheld from this check? So we have the Social Security and the Medicare. Those are required by the, from the federal no matter what. And then you have New York Disability and New York Paid Family Leave. That's there a couple cents, so it's left there as well. On the left side, we have the company. So we have the matching FICA. We have the same 1240 in Social Security company that you have in Social Security employee. We have the same 290 in Medicare company that you have in Medicare employee. And replace, and in addition, there's two taxes called unemployment tax. There's a federal unemployment, which is costing $1.20. And then there's the New York unemployment, which is 625. Yes, the, the New York unemployment rate is much higher than the federal. Actually, what it is, the federal gives you a credit for the, for the state. Anyway, we see over here now, when I close this, that when the save and close, we went through the two sides of the, of the employee withholdings and the company with, um, contributions. 
You also notice in the payroll, in the pay, this is actually the pay stub, you see item PIH, you see the rate of $40, $5. If you want to know why he's earning that, it's a plenty of money for WD. Now, again, the top right corner, we'll give you the two, the we assumption was we entered the employee. He's a bi-weekly employ, uh, employee, he gets paid every two weeks. So since we decided that the pay date is 6-5, automatically it does the calculation for you that you're paying from 5-23 through 6-5 which is also good because we said that we, are, we hired the employee on 522 and you cannot have employees before the hiring date. Save and close. Okay, now you'll see that the taxes with total employee is only $16.84. The employer still saves by 2290. And we create a paycheck. Um, see someone raise their hand over here. Okay, um, so the question to I have to, to uh, Shoshana, to Rachel, to Anonymous, are you in the QuickBooks file that I sent out or are you on your own that you did, you created the employee the first time? Um, yes, you are. Um, the tag, again, the, the way it's set up is uh, it, sh it should have been that way. Um, Okay, so <clears throat> with the black box that you see on the screen is actually where every time I open up the question and answer box. So it's a screen which is not part of the shared screen. Seems like in the last few classes that is what comes black. The when I'm not when I'm opening a window, that's not QuickBooks. Okay, so we'll, we'll get back to the, this issue, which you see why everything is zero. Just create the check for $200, whatever is uh, not gonna be withheld, or you could, um, let's, let's look here now at um, Yaka Fishbein. We'll look at Yaka Fishbein, we're gonna, we're gonna pay him. Actually, we'll do Mrs. Fine first. Because Mrs. Fine is to be a weekly employee who is going to pay. We said she works for 20 hours. She will get $15. It's uh, $300. And what is this here? Okay, now we'll step 14. Okay, step 14 says pay Yaka Fish, but no buy week to check of 1000 Okay, because he is he's getting paid the same week as Pinnacle Stadios. Okay, let's go this, pay employee. And now we're gonna choose Yaka Fishbein. If you notice right now, my pay period automatically moves forward two weeks. The reason why it moves forward two weeks is because we have our employees on biweekly schedules. And once you run paychecks on any given date, in the case that we just did on June 5th, the assumption is that the next Paycheck will be two weeks later on June 19. So that's the, the, the QuickBooks is intuitive to that. But we only, we, what well, we did the long way, we just put one employee. We're going back to put, pay the second employee. Because we're doing one employee at a time so everyone could follow and not get confused. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna re edit the pay period to June 5th. Um, Okay, but again, 
June 5th. So we have my pay period ends 6 5, check date 6 5, pick out a fish bank. And as we said last time, he is on salary for $26,000 a year on a bi weekly payroll, that means, which is, means 26 periods. So it's very simple, he'll get a $1,000 paycheck. Let's see if QuickBooks uh, comes up with the same answer. Uh, press continue. And yes, we have a paycheck of $1,000, taxes of 171. So whoever mentioned before that they have no tax withheld, let's open the paycheck detail. That's again, under, under the check options, there's a tab which says open paycheck detail. And we'll go into it and we're gonna see the two sides of a company and employee. Note on the company side, we only have social security and Medicare and the federal unemployment, it doesn't show state for um, Fishbein. On the right side, we have salary $1,000. We have federal withholding 95. Press zero, we're gonna wipe that, we're gonna take that out. Now, what would happen if you press zero by social security? So you, you manually adjusted a tax amount and this will almost always have a negative effect on your payroll. See, they're, they're, they're discouraging you from doing that. Now, once I press zero, it's not gonna come automatically back Social Security. It's gonna it remain zero. Your Medicare is still here at one, four, five. But we have to go back and we have to manual type in the $62 that you have to hold for Social Security. If you, if you, and you should know by yourself that if you, you by mistake you did this, you could, one way to double check your numbers, always look back at the company side because these two numbers will always be the same. The company side and the employee side have equal social security withholdings, the company and employee, and they have equal Medicare withholdings for company and employee. So again, the reason why it's a minus is on, the, on the employee side is because it's deducted from his check. And we start off with a salary of 1,000. We deduct the $62 for social security employee. We deduct the 1450 for Medicare employee. And what's remaining is a net check for 923. So those are minuses on his check. The numbers on the company side are not minuses. These are positive numbers because this is what the company is going to match the check for the employee. Right? There's nowhere, to, there's nowhere to deduct it from. This is an additional amount that's going to come out of the company's account. So when we save and close, two things are going to happen. One thing is you're going to see the gross pay from the Yakta Fishbein is 1,000. The taxes are 76. And like I told you before, employer is 82. The employer is paying more to supplement the employee's check than what we're withholding from the employee check. Well, we're gonna create a paycheck on the next tab. So we're gonna have a net check of 923.50, that's for the employee. Then we're gonna have what's called payroll liabilities. This is what the employer has to write out to the tax department. What are the payroll liabilities? The payroll li liabilities there's gonna be the sum total of the taxes withheld from the employee and the match and what the employer has to add. So that will be the total 70, the 76.50 that we take off the, the employee check and it will be the 82.50 that the employer adds. Those amounts together are going to be the payroll liabilities. You'll be able to see it in the reports, whether you're in your balance sheet and you're looking at the payroll liability at the pay at the liabilities, or you can find that also in the in the pay down liabilities. When you take employee the employee uh, the, thank you. and you drop down, and you see payroll taxes and liabilities, pay liabilities for this period. You're going to see this uh, these seventy six fifty and the eighty two fifty. But before that, you gotta actually create the paycheck. Creating the paycheck is going to do that for us.
Okay. So now we now we're holding where the we did in the in the previous class of payroll. I did the we had, we re, we recreated the check of Pentecost Tadras, and we recreated for the check for Yaakov Fishman. I'll get to the to the Q and A in a minute. Let's now go to the easiest way to find this. We go to employees and payroll. And we're going to go payroll liability balances. And we're going to take the, we have to take the, the report period is going to be January through, then it will take the end of June. And so if we're, if it comes up automatically in May, you can press HH. HH will automatically get you to the end of the month. Um, uh, the first month and then the second month. And you see over here, by the month that we incurred payroll liabilities from federal withholdings of, of, of zero, from medical, Medicare withholdings of 1740, Social Security withholdings are 7440. You double click on it. It will tell you exactly where it's coming from. You have, if you double click on the 7440, you'll see it's coming out of the paychecks of Pinnacle Tardis and Yaka Fishbine is coming out these two amounts, which total 7440. That's on this, the employee side. It goes further down the report, you're going to see the company. And you'll see again, you know, the same 1740 and that you see by employee, you're going to see 1740 by the company. And you double click, and you'll see, actually, I, cl I clicked on the Medicare one. If you click on the Social Security one, you'll see the same, the same amounts. The total payroll liabilities for creating two checks is 198.74. That is the, rep and we're gonna, when we're gonna go to the, the and then the tonight session, we're gonna start doing reports, and we're gonna do a greater length on Wednesday. We're gonna spend almost the whole time going through reports. And as I told you last time, ultimately that is what the, your employer is going to want whoever's commissioning you to do the all the QuickBooks entries whether for the the invoices the income the payables it, it's only meaningful to them when they have reports and the reports can be customized in, in various ways and this is not an accountant's job as some people think this is part of the bookkeeper you, you, you sat there all you know for a week entering bills and putting in uh, payments of various sorts. At the end, your boss is gonna say, okay, give me a report, give me a PNL, give me a balance sheet. It's not about knowing the terms, it's actually knowing how to create those reports. And you have to be very careful if you're doing the cash basis or cool basis, you have to know what type of, which company, which uh, accounting method your company is on. And you have to know what the pay, the report period will be. Okay, so now we finished um, step number 14. This is, all re uh, was, uh, this is all review from last time. Step number 15, that is going to be a new thing in payroll which you did not do. So after learning how to create a check for data timesheet, which is Pinchas Pat Hudges, we learned how to create a check for an annual salary, bi-weekly, that was Yaakov Fishbein. Now we're going to learn how to create a payroll schedule with alternating time periods. For example, you'll have a Mrs. Stein, a secretary, who wants to get a check every week. You'll have a Mr. Fishbein who he could get a check every, every two weeks. How do you go about doing that? So the first thing you have to do is go to Mrs. Stein, that's in the employee section, and you're going to edit her, and you're going to, and you're going to make sure that her payroll schedule is a weekly schedule. You go to employment, the employment info tab, uh, payroll info tab, and you're gonna change bi-weekly to weekly. Okay, we know already we have here, she is a clerical, she's $15 per hour. And how many hours is she getting? That amount will actually do manually. So, you know, gonna, under the assumption that QuickBooks doesn't have that info. 
you know, if someone's in salary, so the assumption is he's going to get a salary, you know, uh, broken up in those 26 parts. Stone is working by the hour, so you have to look at his time, his time card or what other, other method you have of tracking the hours that they put in. And when you create the check for that employee, then you're going to add in, in the payroll detail, how many hours are doing it. The amount per hour is already pre-entered in QuickBooks. So here we go. We're going to go again, employees, pay employees, go down. And now it should be a, a re, you know, um, more familiar with the way we go to pay employees. Employee tab, drop down to pay employee. And now we're going to select Mrs. Thine. And her check will be 612. Okay. 612, so that's the pay period ending and the check date ending is 612. We just finished 65 and a week later, we're doing the check for Mrs. Fine. We have here clerical 20 hours and we're gonna continue the bottom right corner. Again, these, this uh, warning is gonna keep on coming up, but for now we're gonna ignore it because we have classes, the class feature enabled. Okay, she has again a gross pay of $300 because she put in 20 hours. Her taxes are $45.95. Uh, you, could, you, could, you could again open up the paycheck detail and just browse and make sure everything looks correct. Is he clerical? The rate is 15. The, uh, is $15. That's the rate. Uh, the hours is 20. And then, so that's why the 15 has a, a decimal period. That's for dollar amounts. You don't have to see specifically a dollar symbol. It's enough that you have the rate and you have a decimal, you know, you told, that's the dollars. The hours shows the, shows like, like um, a colon, like on the clock. It doesn't say 20. The number 20 it puts 20, like 20 hours because it could be partial hours also. It could be 20 hours and 30 minutes. And then QuickBooks would calculate you know, another 750 for that extra 30 minutes, if it was only 20 hours and 15 minutes. So that's why it doesn't just put hours 20, it puts 20 with the colon because it is entirely possible that there are minutes, either um, in addition to the hours or just a few minutes missing. It could be it's 19 hours and 50 minutes because one day she took she you up 10 minutes early. And in this case, we have federal withholding 23 you could zero it out if you want, you can leave it there. That is not gonna change, for now, actually for now you'll zero it, zero it out. In general, right now we are, um, the objective is you should know how to make checks. This is a, how you say, it's not real money, it's not coming out of our account. But when you make the, when we're gonna make the reports at uh, you know, in a half an hour from now, or on Wednesday, you will want the numbers to match. So therefore, um, zero at federal withholdings. And the only two withholdings will be Social Security and Medicare from the employee. Notice over here, they're not doing, paid, they're not withholding the paid family leave or the unemployment. That's just how some, uh, how the employee was set up. But you could have the employee set up, but you do want to hold the, the withhold the unemployment especially given the fact that the employer is paying the federal unemployment, but he's not paying the state. So there probably is a connection between the two. Okay. We're going to create her paycheck. Again, Again, we double check again before you create the paycheck. You can always go back. There's a, a back tab on the bottom left. And you can always just leave right now in the middle of nowhere because you, you know you don't want to do something and they're not sure if you have a phone call that's coming in you can press finish later and get back to it but if you're ready to create the, the paycheck which we're ready to do right now so you create create a paycheck and it's done so now we have three checks done all together we have the paycheck for mrs fine 612 we have the paycheck for Mrs. Todd, 65 we have a paycheck for Yaka Fish by M65. Now, we're going to create a schedule. Pinchas Tadjits is not in that schedule because it depends when Pinchas Tadjits will give us his timesheet because he's working on jobs and he didn't give us a timesheet this week, so he's not going to get a check. So Mrs. Fine and Mrs. Fishbein 
are in salaries. Now we could create a schedule because we have one employee on one week and one employee on biweekly. So we're going to create the check, which will be technically due this end of this week, 619. It will be, and you could, and you could, uh, you could you probably figure it out that Mrs. Fine and Dr. Fishburne will get a check this week. Because the Yaka Fishburne's check, last check was 6.5. So he's doing a check at 6.19 on a biweekly basis. This is fine. Who got a check on 6.12? She is due a check this week also because she is on a weekly basis. So let us go to employees and pay employees. Actually, we have to go to employee schedule. How do you create a schedule? So I gave you the instructions in step 15. We're going to go to the payroll info tab. So, but you have to do it on each employee that you're going to set up. So take Mrs. Fine. We're in Mrs. Fine right now. We press the, the edit button that's on the right side of the employee information screen. And we go into payroll info, right? And I said payroll schedule. Here we are. I'm going to add a new payroll schedule, which is called um, they ask you, well, how often are you going to pay this employee on this schedule? Is it bi-weekly or every other week? So the answer is, this one is weekly. And then QuickBooks needs you to set up for the first time, when are you starting this schedule? And when is the pay period ending for the schedule? So the answer is that the end date will be 619. What, the, what date should be on the paycheck? For the pay period, also 619. As we discussed last time, it's not always the same because there are a number of companies that have a several day or even a, a week lag between the pay period and date and the actual check because it could be a company with many employees and they have to get in all the timesheets and everything set in. So you can have on the same and the same day the pay period is ending that they're already creating the checks. So they could probably have, you know, as of Thursday of one week, that, that's where they're cutting off the pay period. And the following Monday or Tuesday, the secretary who's gonna go through all that, that pay period and go through all the timesheets will be able to adjust all the checks to the proper amount and then when they issue it. And it could also be an incentive that an employee doesn't just not show up the day after they get the paycheck because, you know, if, if, the, if, the, if the employer, an employee got his check on the same day they left and then later on you to find out that they, they weren't supposed to get the full amount, then you overpaid the employee. But if you wait a couple of days and the employee knows that he already put in more work, he's probably to come to discuss his departure rather than just making an abrupt departure from the company. Because if he leaves, you know, chances are he's going to be in a lower, um, his, his, his negotiation um, uh, leverage will be uh, diminished. Okay, so, but in this case, we're going to have the pay period ending on 619. The check date will be also 619. I'm going to press OK. Okay, then came a blank. Okay, we're going, to, we're going to call it weekly. So we gave the name, this is what we typed in. What name are we naming this? The weekly schedule. How often? It's weekly. And the pay period ending the 619 and 619 is a paycheck. Once we create this check on 619, automatically when you go to pay employees, Mrs. Fine will bounce up a week later. And you'll be able to see that. You'll see that if you go to pay after we create the 619 check and you press pay employee, then on date 626, Mrs. Fine will, will, will bounce up because she, it's a week later. But Mr. Fishbine will not bounce up on, six, on 626 because we're setting him up on a, on a bi-weekly schedule. And if his pay period ends 619, he will not be do a check until July. So I gave you the preview and now we're gonna actually do this. We pressed okay. And QuickBooks will assign this payroll. To, to, yes, to all employees that have a weekly pay frequency, they'll be on the same date. It means if we had say 10 employees, that we put in the payroll tab over here that they're on a pay frequency of weekly, 
right? Then when we make a, pay, a, weekly, a weekly pay schedule, it'll add all the employees to that schedule. In this case, we only have one weekly and one biweekly, but if we would have 10 employees that were weekly and 10 employees that are biweekly, you only have to set up the schedule under one employee and then automatically shift over the weekly, all the weekly employees to that same pay schedule. We're going to do the same thing now for Yaka Fishbein. We're going to go to him. We're going to edit him to the bi-weekly payroll schedule. So we're going to go add new. We see weekly is still saved here. We're going to add a new one called bi-weekly. Bi-weekly. What is the pay period end date? It's pay period end date. It's going to be the same date. It's going to end 619, and it's going to end 619. And we will press OK. You always double check. It says bi weekly is a name, bi weekly every other week is the, is the frequency, and the pay date is 619 and 619. I'll press OK. We're going to sign this to all bi weekly pay employees. The answer is yes. Two employees were assigned to the bi weekly payroll schedule. So who was added to the bi-weekly schedule? Pinchas Tadros was also added. So if Pinchas Tadros will be due any pay because he has a timesheet, he will show up as well. If he does not have any payroll due, he will show up with a zero, which basically means you won't give him a check. I'm going to take a pause over here to look at the Q&A. And I'm going to wait for, for anyone who wants to run through this uh, step 15, which I just did is to create the schedule for Mrs. Twine. Again, weekly, it's a weekly schedule, weekly frequency, um, cross that where it says, I wrote here, it says 612, but I did 619, so we're gonna, so leave it at 619 as I did it. And we'll generate the paycheck in a moment. And then you'll see the following paycheck in 626, how you'll only have Mrs. Twine and not Mr. Fishbein. Okay, let me look at the Q&A here. Okay, Anonymous is saying here that they updated payroll and that helped them with the, with the withholding, the proper withholdings. Every now and then when you log into QuickBooks uh, and you have payroll, enabled in your QuickBooks and you're going to want to pay an employer or do something like make a payroll form, it will give a prompt that it needs to update the tax tables and you should do so. Okay, so that's, uh, thank you, Anonymous. Uh, Anonymous asking, how do we edit taxes in a paycheck you made? If you already did it, then you Double click the paycheck and go to payroll detail. Go to payroll detail. Uh, I can demonstrate it later on, but right now I'm waiting for people to actually create the check before we discuss how to edit the checks. Okay, Mati, Mati wants to go to payroll liabilities. We'll go to liabilities after we create the paycheck because we'll just see how the payroll liabilities increase. Okay. Yeah, Esther says they don't have payroll because 2019 doesn't allow them. Um, like I said, I always recommend they want to have the same version of QuickBooks. So the payroll, you will need to get the 2020 and then you'll be able to open up the file, the file I gave you. Um, could you could reach out to the office and you know you have the link you can download the, this software and you'll get a license uh, uh, Mr. Berger is asking why is it necessary to name the schedule if it's being set up that way well 
I happened to choose the same name, Weekly. A week, the name of the, of the pair was called Weekly for the weekly frequency. But it could be that you'll give the name as uh, office staff. And office staff get paid weekly. And could be uh, administrative staff, different people get paid. You, you might give the name by the names of the departments, just a way of, as point of reference. But you do need to have a name. As you see, that's how QuickBooks is able to, um, the frequency was able to, QuickBooks was able to group the employees with the same frequency, but the name is a requirement to give QuickBooks as a, as a, as a, as a, way, of quick, as a way of holding on to, the, to those instructions. If you go, if you go into uh, payroll info, you have your payroll schedule, what, bi-weekly and weekly, that's the name of the schedule. It's not the frequency. Frequency is a tab underneath it. So you can always edit these, uh, you, can, you can add new payroll schedules, but um, I, as you can see, I chose bi-weekly and weekly to, to be my, uh, the same name. Okay, let's go back to, um, I believe I now everyone managed to create the, the payroll schedules. Let's go now and create those checks. Shoshana is saying pay, paychecks disappeared. You have to see which pay period we're in because if you're in the same pay period as what we already paid, you're not going to see it. Let's, let's see what's going on here. We'll go employees, scroll down to pay employees. And now we have a thing called scheduled payroll and unscheduled payroll. This wasn't here before. Now there's also called termination check. Termination check is would be when you have the last check, you're getting this check is saying, telling employee, good employee goodbye. That will probably be evidence that the, the company terminated an employee as opposed to employee quitting. If you would, you would prefer to your employee um, quits, so then you would have to discuss with, um, with your advisors um, your legal advisor, what's the best way to issue a check? Yeah, I'm not sure you want to say and it's called termination, that you terminated it. Then you'll be liable for unemployment. Okay, scheduled. We got the scheduled. And now we see here, we have different, uh, it shows you in the bottom, there are different payrolls we did. We did a 612 payroll for, and we know that 300,000 is fine. Underneath that was a 6-5 payroll for $1,200, and we know that was for Mr. Fishbein. Now it's telling us what are we doing. So we have it a bi-weekly one on the top. Create paychecks, the bi-weekly and weekly. And you could highlight one at a time, but it's offering you both options, right? It only does one schedule at a time, and it's telling you that's going to be in four days from now because today is 6.15 and it's due, you see here, um, six, so the pay period is 6.19. Six the check date will also be 6.19. But like we say, the secretary doesn't come in every, week, every day of the week. So today we're going to prepare the checks that the boss just gonna hand out on Friday. So we're gonna create, uh, we're gonna go through two steps, one at a time, we're gonna create first the uh, Buy liquid one for six nineteen, and in the bottom we're going to double click on it, and who is in the bi weekly? So bi weekly is Pinnacles Tadras and Yaakov Fishbein. So fine, that makes sense with what we know so far. I'm going to go continue. And now we don't have to edit the pay period, end dates, and the check dates because we're on a schedule already. Press continue. Again, ignore the one by the class. Now QuickBooks tells us time data has not been entered to one or more employees for whom you're tracking. This might result in paychecks not being created. It's exactly what I told you before. Pinkus Tadras is a bi-weekly employee, and therefore he is in the same schedule as Zach Fishbein. 
the fact that we will not create a paycheck for him or the fact that, or if we will create a paycheck, that is dependent on him giving us a timesheet. But Yaakov Fishbein will get a paycheck regardless. And that is what I told you before. And that's why we go to create paychecks. You see, Pinchas Tadris has a zero amount. Yaakov Fishbein will have a thousand dollar paycheck. You could also open paycheck detail and you'll see what's there. And If you go into Pinchas Tadis, he has a zero. There's, there's nothing here. If he will come and give you a timesheet, then we know what his timesheet is. His timesheet is for item PRH, which is the payroll hourly. It doesn't have to be for plenty of money. It could be for a different employee, a customer. It could be for a different a job. It doesn't have to be for WD, for web design. It could be for anything else. But the fact remains that this week, Pinchas Tadis is... Um, didn't give us anything. Perhaps he doesn't know that we're creating the paycheck today. Maybe he thinks he'll come in on Thursday, a day before, and give and expect that he'll get his check. But again, this is all for entertainment purposes. We're doing Yaakov Fishbein, create paycheck. And again, QuickBooks is reminding you a second time. One employee has no earnings. It's fine. We created a check for Yaakov Fishbein. Uh, oh. So what do you have? So it's, okay, so QuickBooks tells you, because there's nothing there, you have to click the back button, click on the check mark column and remove the employee from the payroll run. Or you can override the system and make changes in the check and add money. So we highlighted that we want to make a check that Pinnacle Star this neck of fish going, but Pinnacle Star is zero. So one option is to go into Pinnacle Star check and give, him, and, and give him an amount. Or you go back and you remove him. So we're gonna go back and remove him. So we click the back, we get to use the back arrow. We're gonna uncheck Pinnacle Tadras. We're gonna go back and we're going to continue creating the check. And this area we're okay with. And we're gonna create the paycheck. Close. Now this is gonna bring us back I think it should be back to the payroll schedule. Yes. You see, now it shows the recent payrolls. We did the 6-5 for two employees. So two people there. We did the 6-12 for one employee. That was for, uh, Mr. for Mrs. Stein. We did 619 paycheck. That was for Mr. Fishbein. What's left to create? It's giving us the preview. So you see, as we said before, for 619, there's still a second payroll to do, the weekly one. And then once we do that paycheck, it's going to drop to the bottom to recent payrolls. But 73 is only showing us one paycheck, and that is the biweekly one. Now, uh, people probably might be raising their hands. What happened to 626? Why isn't 626 showing up? The answer is because we didn't create the weekly for 619 yet. So it's not gonna show us the upcoming 626. But you, could be you should be assured, if it works correctly, that once we create this weekly check on 619, it's gonna bring up prior to the 73, it's gonna generate the 626. Let's see if that is correct. Double click the 619 again. Like I said, you couldn't do, you couldn't just highlight both 619s because they're two different people. One, the two different schedules. One is a weekly schedule, one is a bi-weekly schedule. Now we're gonna go continue, Mrs. Fine. This error again, we're gonna bypass. And her check is $300. Let us create a paycheck and close. And now when it brings us back to Create paychecks, you see 626. So now um, it, everything is like so, is, is, a, is an automated, automatic mode unless you need to make manual adjustments. So this is completes a segment on creating a schedule for paychecks. And you can review at the bottom, always refer to it. You have the ch well, one check on 65, one check on 612. You have on 619, you have again two different paycheck counts, right? 
and the total is $1,300. It also makes sense because you have 1,000 for one person, 300 for another. And then you go to the top, we have upcoming, a check on 626 weekly and a check on 7.3 biweekly. And again, after we will create the 626 weekly, then the 7.3 weekly will show as well. It doesn't show us two of the same schedule and, and upcoming. It only shows one of each. Because the idea is it's going to show us the upcoming check. Uh, let me see if there's Q&A on this. And those that want can take a couple moments to, uh, if, if they weren't doing it on their own QuickBooks that they're just watching, they could, ju they could re re um, go through the steps we just did. The pay, the pay the employees on the payroll schedules. The next segment, just a preview, will be to uh, do another debit and credit entry. And this is going to be on the receiving end. We had uh, about, we, had, we discussed before about Ruvain buying a summer home for rental. And we discussed the debits and credits that he does when he is um, purchasing, when he's putting down his down payment and is getting a mortgage and paying the taxes and the closing fees. We did those, those um, debits and credits. I gave you in the email a copy of the general journal transactions. Um, actually, the, the journal trans I gave you was the adjusting ones. If this is that's for those who want to uh, do a review on those, you can ask me. You can ask those questions at the Q and A. If you didn't understand what the adjusting and reversing entries are, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at the other side. If you were in the lawyer's office, you're the secretary in the lawyer's office, and you receive the, you can assume the down payment went directly to the seller, but Many times the, the mortgage check is given like an escrow to the lawyer and the lawyer is going to, at the closing, will hand over the check or you might have a representative from the bank giving the check, depending, but in this case, we're using the lawyer. The lawyer is a clearing house. He receives the bank, the mortgage check, and he also receives the closing fees and he receives the property taxes. How would the secretary in that office do the debits and credits? We'll get to that in a moment. Let me see what the question is higher so far. Yes, you cannot run payroll in a sec. This is from uh, Judy. You cannot, in, in a second QuickBooks file, there are some limitations. And one of them is doing payroll. So you, you exit the primary QuickBooks file and try again. That is the answer. QuickBooks gave you the the solution. Okay. Again, <clears throat> people have um, questions regarding the technical withholdings that we could do again by the Q and A. Uh, right now, the, what I would the objective, at least, you should be able to do in the class is you should know how to make a check and how to make a schedule. If the numbers are not matching exactly, so first of all, you have my file. So that should have cleared up all the issues up until last class. You can get a copy of that file. And if there's something in this class that you're missing, it'll be easier to do it live and while you look at the QuickBooks than trying to text back and forth and everyone in the class listening. Okay. The page I'm on recent payments is, is the default QuickBooks page after paying a schedule. Again, how do we pay a schedule? You go to employees, drop down pay employees, and there's a scheduled payroll. Now the scheduled and unscheduled, because it's, it's possible that uh, the, the employee the, the secretary didn't per, enter every employee in the QuickBooks correctly. And one employee walks into the office and says, 
okay, where's my check? So you gotta go right now and just issue a payroll check, which QuickBooks could do for you if you enter in the annual salary and you, um, the withholdings will also do, but the, you don't, if you don't uh, add this employee to a specific schedule because you're not sure yet, will it be a weekly or will, will it be a uh, bi-weekly or maybe it's a one time. So it's still payroll. It is payroll because for purposes of QuickBooks, you paid, a, you paid an employee a check, you made withholdings, it is payroll. But scheduled is when you, have, you know the people are gonna be there uh, recurring week after week or, or uh, bi-weekly uh, periods one after another. But you only get these options if you create the schedule under the employee first, which was the bulk of the, for, for the past hour. And one, again, once you create a check, QuickBooks will leave you, when you, when you pay on a schedule, QuickBooks will leave you in the schedule uh, page was showing you what, was, what schedules you did previously, recently, and what did you do, um, what's upcoming. How do I get to the page we see that the answers, that's anonymous question answered. Okay, Maddie's saying that you put the check at 619 instead of 612. How do you change it? And the answer is you don't change it. Leave it 619. Okay, so to demonstrate, anonymous asking, how do you demonstrate the last step with Mrs. Fine and 26? <clears throat> well, you see right here, if you double click on 626, I'll demonstrate, you'll see that who is in a weekly schedule? Only one employee, Mrs. Fine. So I'm going to continue, I'm going to create a check, you know, uh, because 626 for many people is. Uh, towards the eight weeks of their PPP. Well, if people got it later. So you wanna make sure it's expensed in June so you can uh, actually qualify uh, for uh, forgive, debt forgiveness. So we're gonna create the paycheck. Done. Now we're gonna have 7-3 showing up, right? Yeah, two people showing up in 7-3, the weekly one and the bi-weekly one. So in the recent, it's not going to show you doubles. It will show you that you made a check in 6.5, you check in 6.12, 6.19, 6.26, 6 which what you, how you'll be able to tell is by the paycheck count. You'll see 2.121 one, because on each date you created two checks. One was a weekly check, one was a bi weekly check. In the, actually, in the case of 6.5, they were both bi weeklies, one at a time. In the case of 612, it was one weekly check. In the case of 619, it was one weekly, one bi-weekly. But on recent, it's only going to show you the total. But in create paychecks, we have to go to, there it's going to show you if you have two separate payrolls to make, a weekly and bi-weekly in the schedule, it will show it to you because you, you have to double click on each one separately and go through the steps. So the windows are not identical. Right, they look similar because they have uh, five columns across, but the, you could you could go column by column. On the bottom it says what the check date was they did, and on the top it says process payroll, and it's a process. Each one you have to click on e on each schedule. Then again on the bottom the second column the action is complete. It's done. We already did checks. On the top it's status. It lets you know that you're two weeks from now. Right. If you remember, before we did the check on 619, we saw the, the word four days. So if it's less than a week, it'll tell you the amount of days. Now, it's not, when it's more than a week, it's not going to tell you two weeks and four days from now. We'll just tell you that it's two weeks ahead. And then the payroll schedule is weekly, bi-weekly that you see. You see the pay period and the check dates. Once we set the schedule, 
that we want the pay date to be the last day of pay period. So QuickBooks will automatically always make the same check as check date. You could go back to his pay schedule and say, you know what, I want to have a three or four day lag between pay period and paycheck. So then you'll enter one time that check date will be instead of seven three seven seven, and then for the four the following checks, QuickBooks will know because not because it's a Navi, but only because you programmed it. Right, so it's not going to be uh, you're going to program it. It's going to know to put four days uh, post the pay period will be the date of the paycheck. Okay, so this is the end of payroll. Any further questions in payroll, you can ask a Q&A. We'll discuss in the preparatory classes for the certification course. But in class itself, we will not be discussing payroll further. We're going to focus on the next class on reports. And we need to do this debit and credit. So let's see. Let's, let's analyze this. It's actually, this is actually a question which someone asked me previously, but probably in the second class of the course. They're already asking, I work in an, uh, in an office and we receive the money from the employee, the, the, in the escrow account. How do we do, what do we do? What's the entry? So the answer is when you receive money and you put it in the bank account, so it is an asset. It's something which the company has and it's value. And it goes to your bank account. That's a debit, $180,000 is a debit. But for every debit, there's a matching credit. What is the matching credit? The answer is, it is a liability. It's not equity. You don't own it. It's not what the boss of the company owns. He didn't put in his equity. This is something which you have to pay. It's not yours. You have to pay this money to the seller. So it's going to be, for starters, a debit $180,000 to the bank. In this case, will be Chase. Um, actually, or wouldn't be Chase because we're, we're in a company. But we have also the two thousand dollars for closing fees. In that case, that will be revenue. So again, this will be a debit two thousand dollars to the bank for for the lawyer. But it'll be in this case, the two thousand dollars will be a credit for revenue because that is the lawyer's fees. So you could make a compound entry. You could put in debit bank, $182,000. It's all in the bank. And you make a separate credit, one for $180,000, which would be a liability. That's to pay the, the seller of the, the summer home. And a, and a, and a second $2,000 credit, which would be revenue for the lawyer that will balance out the 182 for 182. But we are not done yet because we still have another $3,200 to account for. There's property taxes, 2,700, and there's 500 for interest. So similarly, you would also have a, an, another $3,200 debit, which is um, for the bank where you could, again, you could have the whole 185,200 one shot. And you're gonna have a, a, a 2,700 credit, which is a liability for the property taxes. And the $500 will be another liability, which you're going to pay to the to, to chase for short interest. Or you might write out the check right away. In that case, you have a credit for the bank. So this part, I just, um, I'm not entering in the, in the actual QuickBooks because it's a different company. You know, we could do all the entries for Ruvain, who is the, who's the, who's the purchaser. And he might as well be the owner of We Do It All, which is the company. But you can't make the lawyer's entry inside his company file. It's similar to putting your own personal bank account in the company file. It doesn't belong there. And that's actually something you have to know. There's no commingling co of funds. If you are investing money in the company and you're increasing your equity, so there is an account for that. It's called member equity. If you're, if you're taking money out of the company 
as a draw, that it's called a draw. Again, the, taking money out of the company is not an expense. The same way you put in the money as an investment, the company is not using it as income, right? It's a loan that doesn't make the money. So too, when you take the money out of the company, it's not an expense. It's called a draw in this case. So that's, that's what you do it. You're not gonna put your own bank account in this company that doesn't belong there. Um, that's, that takes care of the first page of today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look again at question and answers if anyone had the Q and A, if anyone had questions on the discussion for the debit and the credit. And then we're gonna go to do a few more of the window navigations, the, the features of QuickBooks. I said there are many, many features and I break it up over the classes because if I'll go through a hundred different features, um, you're not gonna walk away with much. So I'll do a little bit. If anyone has questions, they can ask them that as well. And about 20 minutes, we'll go over to the, audio, to the audio Q and A. Let's just see here, my 15. How do we add, Matthew wants to know, how do we add the info for check for Pinchas? So the answer for Pinchas is that he only gets paid when he does a timesheet. Or we, and we have to enter the timesheet then. We didn't do any of that. But, you know, it's, um, again, I said, I'm not going to do QuickBooks again, uh, payroll again. It, um, there are some people that don't have the payroll. I believe we already got the basics. And you can watch the review from the, this class and from the previous class with the payroll. It can help you out. And um, yeah, that's that for that one. We answered, took care of anonymous. Okay, so the, right now I don't see any more Q&A current Q and A's. Other than the, some technical questions from before. In general, when you wanna edit anything, it doesn't make a difference about a paycheck. It doesn't, mean it, make, it doesn't make a difference if it's an invoice or a bill from a vendor. We said we, when you, when you, what you do is you double click on the invoice or the bill or the paycheck and you just simply overwrite the number that's there. That's how you edit it. Just be sure before you go out and you're going to save the change. Because if you don't save the change, then nothing was done. In most cases, um, probably the 100% of the cases when you, if you have that preference enabled, okay, because that and added preferences we discussed last time, you could disable that question of saving changes. Where was that? That was probably in general. If you go to general under my preferences, right? Pre uh, and how do you get to my preferences? You go to edit, you drop down preferences, you go to the general tab, there is um, under my preferences is warn when deleting a transaction or unused item list, that's one. But then on the left side is warn when editing a transaction. Now it doesn't warn you when you actually edit it. What it does is that if you edit the transaction and then you're gonna close it out, it'll ask you if you wanna save the change. So if you will, um, you, if you will uncheck this and it won't get the warning, by mistake you could go into transactions and edit them and it's gonna close it, and you'll be changing your P&L, you'll be changing your balance sheet inadvertently, you know, with an unconsciously, or trying to look at something, then your arrow went somewhere, and you, and you typed in a button by mistake. So this default, I would recommend you leave. So warn when editing transaction, or warn when deleting a transaction, that you should leave there. What we put in tonight's um, course, or in structure, let's see what we want to do. Um, this is inbox and Zoom. Let's see what this is. What are we supposed to cover tonight? We're supposed to cover number one lists, an accountant, and to, to take a look at reports. So we're going to leave the reports for next time. Other than the fact that I want to show you. Like I always tell you, there are multiple ways to do anything in QuickBooks, and a lot of them are correct. It's just a question of preference. 
So some people are comfortable, for example, some people are comfortable going to the homepage every time. <clears throat> so we go to the homepage by going to company and homepage. And you have over there the three tabs, which are for three sections for vendors, customers, or employees. And you go into the various functions of each. Alternatively, you could go into each center. You go to customer center. You go to vendor center. There's employee, has an employee center. Everything has its own center. And reports has its center too. In addition to all the drop downs and various shortcuts that you could go to to make a, which we did before, we did a PL, we did a balance sheet. I want, to, I want you to know there's a custom a report center. And in that report center, it gives you very, a various um, pre selected types of reports under each um, class. That means you, under sales, we'll ask you, you could have this month by date, or you could have this fiscal year to date going down. And uh, you can have sales by rep. If you have, there's so many types of reports you can have. That's why I said I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it for next class. But you can have summaries. You can have details. You can have it by. You can have a report by the addresses. You want to know by which area you're shipping to, or you can have pending sales. And same thing on the customers. This we're gonna go to next time. But for now, you should know there is a report center, in addition to the. You know, some people like to are, like to look at the pictures and some people like the text better. And if you wanted to know what's outstanding collections, you can have actually under customers, right? Reports dropped on customers, you have a collections report. Collections report tells you who's outstanding. And if you, in this case, Plony Almoni is actually, he's over, he overpaid 625, right? Last time he gave us $1,000 to pay is 375 invoice. So we have what's we're gonna do next time what's called um un, we said it's unearned revenue. We didn't earn it yet. We have as a as a retainer for future services. This will be an adjustment which we'll do in the next class. Mrs. Cook, she's already a week a week, a month overdue. 513, she owes us $140. It's time to give her a call. Mr. Gabay, he owes us $1,300. And most, a lot of it was for merchandise that he bought to sell to Schwartz. He definitely deserves a call. He should have that before he spends the money. So this is collections report. So we have report center, we have collections report. This is, you know, a lot of the secretary is, is it's her responsibility to make the phone calls. Yeah, you know, um, there are sales reps, they just make the sales and they're just hitting the road and they're generating revenue for the company. But once they do the sale, most often it's the person in the office following up, collecting payment and paying the bills. And another report you should know is aging summary, right? Before we, we just took a collections report, it showed us who owes money in general. You could look at it by the date, but if you go in the aging summary, reports aging summary, reports aging summary, you'll see on a timeline how far out they owe you. Some people are one to 30 days and some people are over 30 days. So you would wanna call quickly the people that are more than 30 days overdue so because um, delinquent, uh, a sign of a troubled account is the how how delinquent they are it's possible you gave them 60 days um, um the terms of payment you know we said that you, could, you could set up in 30 days you can have it 10 days you can have it dual upon receipt you can have it 60 days if you were desperate to make the sale you might have been more flexible on the terms and that you will notice on, that you'll be able to see on the invoice what were the terms of payment but as far as reports are concerned you should be able to have and a way of making a report of aging. Okay, now let's go over to, um, I'm, I'm opening the, 
the, the, the paper that I gave you before, give me one second. Oh, actually I have it here. My, my printer was, I, my printer printed double-sided, so what the paper I was looking for is actually here. I'm as, I'm print that out on the second side. So we have, we, today we wanted to look at lists. Okay, so let's look at lists. It's, uh, we, have, we went through chart of accounts. We know about chart of accounts. We know about item lists. We have fixed asset lists. Let's look at the fixed asset. This is number one, which I wrote here. We're gonna look lists and fixed assets. Now, what QuickBooks keeps track of our major purchases. We have a copier that was purchased in 513. And the QuickBooks put in this note, I only recall making this note, it tells us it was purchased six months after starting business. That is because we, went, we made one little sale to a Fiverr's Glick in December of 2019, right? We put that in and we bought a copy of May. So it tells us that we bought it six months after starting the business. Okay, this is, I guess, incidental uh, anecdotal info. It's the counter furniture and equipment. Let's double click on it for a second because people were asking, how do you know what to depreciate? How does QuickBooks account rate it? So you have here what's called the asset tab. You could do this or your accountant might do this for you, but it's, it's uh, without going to too much accounting, I'm just showing you the feature in QuickBooks so you should be aware that it does exist because every time we made an asset Right, we, 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 we made a purchase and we threw it into assets. QuickBooks told us, oh, by the way, we keep track of your assets. And this is really what it tells us. You have asset description. Right, there's, there's a purchase description, there's an ad, asset description. You could put it when the warranty expires, you get a serial number. And then there's a cost price and then there's a sales, pr sales price. I mean, it's possibly, it's probably, right, you bought, First thing you want to know, do you buy a new copier or a used copier? That's the first thing. So we assume that we bought a new copier. Well, now assets don't always break and go to the garbage. There are times that you, know, you want to sell it out and, and uh, trade in for a new one. That will be the, on the right side, the sales description. You could, sell the, you could sell the item and you'll pick a sales date and the sales price. Now, what does it make a difference? The difference is, if it costs $1,200 and we sell it for 600, we probably had a $600 loss. That is when we will recognize the $600 expense. This week we uh, said several times in class, the difference between making a purchase or writing out a check for an asset. When you write out a check for an asset, it's not gonna be on your P&L. It's not, it's not an expense. It's called a shift in assets. Before it was cash in the bank. And now I bought a copy machine. So I own a copy machine. Before it was cash in the bank. Now it's inventory. Now I have it in, my, in the for resale for the business. Or maybe it wasn't um, cash in the bank. Maybe uh, that went out. Maybe I, I bought it on, a, on, on, the, on account. So then it never left. My bank account is still the same. But I have a new asset course, which is a, which is the copier. And you know, for those who are following debits and credits, if if you have a debit in the in the in the furniture, which is an asset, and you didn't, you did not credit your bank account for the purchase because you did not write out a check. Then obviously that it's a liability now. The credit is a liability because you bought it on the account. All these things tying together. So if you would sell this $1,200 copier for $600, now you would recognize a $600 um, expense because it's a loss in sale. Now again, this is, this is only true as of today, as of 615. Why? Because if you're gonna depreciate the item and already devaluate it. So you didn't lose $600 because the value of the item is no longer 1200. You already took the depreciation expense. 
So then the real loss will be the difference between the, the, the sales price and the new value after depreciating it. Okay, so I showed you here um, a tab for fixed assets. I'm going to show you a list called templates. And this you can actually spend a lot of time in, which we're not going to do. In. This is if you want to customize what your invoices look like or what um, you want to put your logo on it. You can, for example, if you have attorney's invo invoices, or you got fixed fee invoices, you have packing slips. There are many types of invoices. This is just, I'm not going to spend much time in it, but I'll just take, for example, the regular Intuit service invoice. We have, this is a blank. Um, if I double click on it, this is our company. We do it all because we never put an address. If you want your invoice, this, this, now you get to see what your invoice looks like before you just saw a screen. If you want to have your address in it, where will you do that? You would do it by company, right? On the company. Not over, okay, so over here, you will update the information, company and transaction information. You would, you would update your information. You would go back to your contact and you would add the address to your company. Maybe you want to have a phone number. Maybe you want to have a logo. You have the option of putting your logo in your invoice right here. Logo and fonts. And then to select the logo, it's going to ask you to pick a file, a picture, a JPEG, or, or any type of other picture. We're not going to go into that now. But I'm, this is a feature which you should be aware of it exists in QuickBooks. You can edit the way your invoices look. Sometimes it might be the face of your company. Sometimes you want to patch go around and you want all the columns on the top to match the bottom columns. You're, you're, you're a neat freak and this is the way you want it to look, no problem. So you could change the design, the layout designer. And it tells you, it's, there are pre, this is designed for pre-printed forms. That means you might have had forms that have already pr printed the tabs and you will, um, the number, the, all the text, the description, the item names are gonna go into certain fields. Therefore, you might, well, you can make limited changes, but you can make a copy. If you're printing on blank paper, then you can do all the design changes you want. You can put your email address. Okay, I leave it to you to spend your time um, going through all the invoices or just, if you make a statement for your customer, you might, you know, you might have uh, edit your statements to look differently. These are, this is uh, the back end of QuickBooks. You could sit around and design. This is not necessary to, it's not necessary to do other than change your company address. You could live your whole life using QuickBooks pre-designed uh, pre uh, forms, but at least you know where to go and list, where to edit it. Templates are the or templates, however people want to prefer to pronounce it, are for, for all these um, different forms. Then we have lists, add, edit, multiple list entries. Okay, let's go down to that. That's the last one on the list drop down. And let's, let's see, quick, let's go bring it up. We have here customer lists, customer with pony. I'm only, this is our list of our customers. You could go here, instead of editing one by one, we could go inside and we could, we could um, update or create customers right here in this layout. You could, you could edit, you could start typing in, right? There's a, there's a type and field, but you could, instead of uh, creating one customer by another, by another, you could, you could uh, in this um, open window, add customers or, uh, um, change their addresses. You go further down, you have the add build tool, build address, it's all the contact in info. You could do this in this window as well. You can also import customer lists. Remember we said before, if we create a new company from an existing file, all it really does is it <clears throat> generates the same chart of accounts, a customized chart of accounts. You might've edited a hundred different accounts and you want to keep the same chart of accounts, but you're not going to have your customers here. You might have a thousand customers you want to bring over. You have your vendors. You don't want to retype them all over again. So we, we discussed last time that you can go to file, 
utilities and import IIF files. IIF files could be um, uh, an information interchange file, I believe it is called, or from an Excel file, you could bring in your customer lists the same way you would previously export your lists to IIF files, right? And then you would import the list in the current, in the new, in the new, in the new QuickBooks file. You can also edit your vendors. So I'm going to say, no, I'm not changing anything. You can edit vendor information. In this case, by vendors, we were very, we didn't really put in addresses, but you could, you could do what you want. You have service items. We see here, here, the BK, the GC, the HK, that's the service items. You also could look at our inventory parts. And at this, we see the cost, we see the sales price. I believe it will tell us also the quantity in hand. Yes, it does. It, so this is where it's a master, it's a master list uh, section to look at all the types of lists. Then you have non-inventory parts and inventory parts. Okay, so this is, goes through the lists drop-down menu. Um, you could spend more time on bill rate level, that's more advanced. We would discuss that already. Do you want to charge the same price for every service using a certain employee, or you want to customize your services by the service you offer? Um, right, if you go building rate, no, it's going to ask you that question. Is it a fixed rate for everything, or are you customizing the rate? But we're not going to go into that now. We're going to go over to accountant drop down. We have a few minutes left. We'll do this. Accountant. Remember, we, I discussed last time. I the I, I was giving you the. I was contrasting the accountant drop down from the company. I said the company could make general journals entries, and the accountant can make general journal entries. I said, what's the difference? The difference is when. They are a bit more complex and uh, from an accounting perspective and the office does not, that does not know how to do it. The accountant would create general journal entries. Then he would send those general journal entries to the client who would, create, who would send general journal entries. And in this case, it's gonna ask us um, what do you wanna send uh, from this, this fiscal year, we'll take an example. And we have these general journal entries. And you could create a little file for general journal entries. And we said, if you go to File, Utilities, Import, this is where you import the general journal entries that an accountant will send you. So, we, like we explained in the last class, when you make an ABA file, that's the accountant, right? It's, we go by the last letter of the file. If it's, the, if it's the A, it's the accountant. If it's a M, it's the mobile, that's a portable file. If it's a B, it's the backup. So the customer makes general journal entries in the company and he sends the accountant to the file. Those journal entries will be there. So when the accountant gets a file, he's going to get automatically all the journal entries. But the accountant and his accountant file could create new entries that he wants to send back to the client. And that the accountant has uses the send general journal and send journal entries. And when he does that, the company will import them with using the utilities menu. Now the interesting thing called batch enter transactions. And this is available in accountant software. If you don't have the accountant software, you won't have it, but you'll see the mile of it. Over here, you could enter many transactions, either checks or deposits in one. You don't have to do one by one. You could just go down, go down, go down, go down, go down, go down. You have your 10 checks written on the same date and you can write the pays and you could save it. You don't have to do one by one. This is people who know how to do QuickBooks and they are familiar with the program and time is of essence, time is worth money. And they, they want to do in, in, speed, in a very expeditious manner. They want to enter in um, information. 
You can do it like this. Someone who has a credit card bill and they don't want to give you the login. I always tell people, you know, if you don't want to give someone an account with the login to your uh, to account that's logged into a bank, it's no problem, even though, um, but what you should do is you should give them an electronic file because if you don't give them an electronic file, they'll, they'll charge you for manual entry if that's, what you, if that's what they're gonna have to do. You have a credit, you give them a credit card. Okay, create me a p and Here's my credit card charges. Here are my bank statements, make me a P&L. We could go in over here and go down and just enter one by one by one, by, enter the dates. And you could enter the, what the credit card charges are. Who, who did you pay? The, it was a Con Edison bill. If, the, if, the, if it's there, or we have to create new pays and new accounts, we'll, we'll give them the expenses. This is what accountants could do, but you could do this in an office. You don't have to be an accountant to do it. You could use accountant software in an office. You will have this feature that you'll be able to do to enter. Um, it's called batch. This is what we call again, batch enter, not one at a time. You get one screen and how do you do it? You see at the bottom, there's a total of charges and total of credits. So you would look at your credit card statement after you enter everything in and you would see if the total new charges on the statement equals the total charges on this window, then you know you entered everything that's there correctly and you can just go save transactions. If the amounts are not the same, then you will double check where is there a discrepancy. And the same thing, you, you can enter credits if you have various credits, you make payments, you can do that on the credit card as well. This is called batch and enter transactions. One more thing which we'll do is reclassify. We had this issue in the first class, uh, not the first class, but in the first class, we were, we were making uh, bills and some people were, were entering, um, they were buying the copier or they were, they were buying a computer and they put in as an expense and I said that this is really an asset. You bought something which is very valuable and it still exists in the company. It didn't uh, break and get destroyed in the first week. So it's an asset. So there's a thing called reclassify. Accountant, client data review, drop down. Okay, we'll, okay, we'll uh, take the accountant. Drop down to client data review, reclassify. And then you could go back to, again, we're gonna check the Y for the beginning of the year, R for the end of the year. And you're gonna bring in all the, th all, the ac all the transactions of this current year. And we're gonna go, for example, to the balance sheet account, right? We see here, we have a house on our books. We have a mortgage, we have member's equity, a lot of things going on. If you decide, for example, <clears throat> that uh, we, have z we have zero supplies right now. What do I do here? Okay. And let's go our, our line. Okay. If you wanted to take um, <clears throat> your accumulated depreciation, for example, we said, um, that and we want to record how we do all we press all <clears throat> and include journal entries. That's not coming up over here. Let's see. Okay, the, the best way to give an example will be in the PL. So, again, we're in the drop down accountant, uh, the, the, the subdivision of client data review, and then the arrow that goes out that say reclassify. And go to meals, for example. Let's say I saw that in Super 13, I really didn't buy food. I bought supplies. I bought a bunch of paper towels and Kleenex. So then I want to highlight Super 13 transaction. I go to the bottom and I'm going to change the account to supplies. Where is supplies in the drop down? Office supplies, in this case, office supplies, reclassify. All of a sudden, we only have the essence, $76 in the Mills Entertainment. 
And if I go to my office supplies, we'll see super thin shows up. Now you could highlight the whole section. You could also select all. You could reclassify hundreds of transactions in one shot in the accountant software or in the enterprise software if you have it. It's a very, very useful feature where when you're reviewing the, a, 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 your information, again, this is not necessarily for an accountant. This could be in an office where they have, a, it's very busy and they're making a review of their transactions. And they realize that a whole account, a, a bunch, a bunch of, of uh, transactions were given the wrong classification. If you do not have this feature, you have to go one by one by one and double click, have to double click on the check, go to the account and reclassify it manually. And you, could, you have to do this a hundred times, it'll take a long time. You could make one big general uh, um, journal entry to wipe out the whole account. But the best way to do it is to select everything and to reclassify it that you have in this version. At this point, we're gonna take a, we're gonna finish the, the, the instruction part of the class. I'm gonna go over to, Q and, to the questions and answers. I'm gonna look first at the Q&A that was typed in in class, and then I'm gonna go over to audio, enable the people. And I hope this was informative and be able to follow along. If you have any questions, then please do it on the Q&A. I get a lot of questions during the week and it's, to answer it will be 30 seconds to a minute and a half on the Q&A, but if they're giving me a diagram and giving me pictures, they're expecting me to go to my QuickBooks and compose a whole email. It'll take me 15, 20 minutes. It, it's not right. We have time designated for that. So please stay on the Q&A if you have your questions. We, again, our goal is to help you succeed in this course. We're not shying away from answering your questions, but there is a time and a place for everything. Thank you very much for your understanding. Um, Okay, I see only one question, two questions in the last half an hour. Let's see here. Did we enter new PR item salary enter 26 for the rate? That's Mr. Gold. The answer is, um, I'm not sure which QuickBooks file you're looking in, the one that we did the first six weeks or the one that I gave out last week. But if you were using my file, the, the salary for $26,000 was already there. That's the rate. But if your question is, if this is what you should enter, then the answer is yes, you have a salary for $26,000 for the rate. But you have to make sure that's annual. Okay, we have, um, okay, thank you very much. I'm looking now at the attendees. We're gonna look for the raised hands. Hello? Is Rachel available? Second chain. Uh, my, if you have a question, I don't hear you right now. I, I took out my problematic headphones. So now I, can, I should be able to hear you. Okay, we're gonna enable Lester Frachel comes on and enable to talk, we'll let her talk. Hello? Hello? Yeah, who's Esther? Yeah. Okay. What's your um, Okay, I have a few questions. First of all, I have the 2019 um, version, not accountant. Okay. Um, QuickBooks is not backwards compatible. So you're going to have to open up a 2020 file in the 2020 software. Okay, so that's so then I'll have to do that and then re enter everything else. 
it won't have to be, in, well, only today's lesson because if you're downloading my file, which I shared with everyone, with the payroll enabled because that's the only way it's going to happen. So you'll have all the classes up until because basically today I redid the payroll class. Uh -huh. Oh, so it's just this. Okay, so just what, you, what, you, look into, what you won't have is a general journal entry we did last class. So that's what you have to do. You have to enter manually. The last, just the general journal entry for last class. So I have to do the general journal. And what was actually an adjust, was adjusting and a reverse. You remember the adjusting and the reverse? Yeah. Right. Um, you, you, and you, then, you understand the purpose of the adjusting and the reverse? No. no so then I'll, so I'll have to explain that again in class. So, but uh, I'm going to watch the YouTube, like, yeah. like retake the class, basically. <laughs> That's what I would have to do. Because of the payroll, I've been not been able to follow along. I mean, I've been listening, but I couldn't really do any of the entries. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the the um, 2020 um, QuickBooks um, uh, program, how do I get it? So we have, um, if, you, if you email me after the class, I'll try to send you again the link, but we, we sent it multiple times. The, oh, that in the beginning. Okay. Fine. Even a week ago, we sent again. Um, if you look at emails coming from from myself, um, I didn't. I, I usually send probably. I try to keep it to one email per class, more or less. So not too many emails. If you if you look like three four emails ago, there should be uh, the link for downloading the software. But again, if you if you email me right if you email me right right after the like right after Q and A, I'll be able to take care of it. Okay. Right. Fine. Um, but just in short, before I go to the next question, what we explained last, for those that are still listening, when a company, let's say, take payroll as an example, we pay every two weeks, right? So, we, and the last paycheck is December 20th. And you want to, and you are on a accrual basis, which we're doing right now for the most part, not the cash basis. So, you want to recognize what your expenses are for the year, right? The next paycheck is only going to be in January, but most of the paycheck is still in this year, right? So the way to do is you make an entry, an adjusting entry to recognize the payroll cost of the last 10 days of the year. It's not a, right, you don't want to have in January 2nd, you make a PL, what am I doing this year? And I already had a, a huge payroll expense. That's not a, a fair way of, of doing of keeping the of keeping the books. So what you do is you make an adjusting entry at the end of um, twelve thirty one, usually then the or any payroll cycle. Let's say before any time you're making a report. When we did this last time for May thirty first, we said the bank needed the financials, so we did um, an entry to recognize the costs that were not yet um, picked up. The costs that were not yet what? The costs that were not picked up as of the date. That means when you were in p &L, you only have the payroll expense as of December 20th. You want to take a full year report, you want to have on the seven, on, to recognize by December 31, 11 out of 14 days of payroll. So you're going to have 11 days this year. And so you only do this adjusting and reverse like um, once a year. Once a year, or, or it could be every quarterly, it could be any time you, you make your report. Right, okay. Uh, okay. On the accrual basis, when you want to recognize what are the true expenses. But it's not just payroll. It will be on, on other expenses, on supplies, on, on depreciation. Depreciation usually is done once a year, but you have a lot of things, you know, sometimes you, you, people want to, they, they check up their inventory, and they realize whatever they thought is the inventory is not the amount that they have. You know, they thought they had an inventory $10,000 worth of supplies. And really, they have only um, $9,500. They have to recognize a $500 loss because if it wasn't through sales. So they're making an adjusting entry. Now, the purpose of the reversing entry is was what I said before. What I explained is that when you want to make a check in January, you don't want to just make the check for, um, for a couple of days. You want to give a full check. Right, when you go to January 3rd, for example, you have to give a two-week check. 
So the way, so how are you going to give a two-week check? You're going to give a full check to the employee, you know, so you can, so the, the adjusting entry helped you last year. You recognized 11 days of payroll, right? But if you're going to give a full check this year, on January 3rd, you're going to be, you're going to, you're going to be giving, a, you're not fixing the second part of the problem. You're recognizing too much payroll in the first four days. So the reversing entry undoes it. What it's going to do is going to put back the expense from whatever you recognized last year. And it's going to give a negative expense this year. So if, if, if let's say, let's say take example of a paycheck of a thousand dollars and um, you had eight, you recognize $800 of expense in 2019 or in May, in May of 2020 when you did your report. So then it's, what it's going to do is it's going to give a negative $800 expense for 2020. What's going to happen? When, what's going to happen when you give a thousand dollar check in 2020? You're going to give the thousand dollar check, but you're only going to recognize four hundred dollars. So it's going to keep it static. You're going to have a thousand dollar check, but the thousand dollar check will be divided eight hundred dollars in last year and two hundred dollars for this year. So that's the the adjusting entry and it's the reversing entry. Okay. All right, uh, thank you. I hope, I hope it was, it was insane. If it's, if again, don't, don't be shy. If, if you didn't understand the explanation, you'll, uh, you'll ask me and we'll discuss it again next time or in the, in the preparatory classes. Okay, we're going to try again next, next client. Next person has a question. MD who has a question. Um, Ms. Randler here, do you still have your question? I'm not picking up anything here, so I'll go to Judy. I'm sorry. I thought I unmuted. I didn't. Okay. Reviewing what the what you just told the lady, the other lady, uh, what would be the adjusting entry? Adjust, adjusting entry. 19. You'd have debit payroll expense 800 and credit. The adjusting entry and the reversing. Okay. Well, well, in this case, it's going to be since it's only adjusting, that means you never actually did it. You're not crediting your account, your, your bank account. I know, but what would the adjusting you're, you're, you're crediting payroll expenses. No, you're debiting payroll expense for 800. Oh yeah, yeah, you're, you're crediting payroll, uh, payroll payable. That means, you're that means- uh, Crediting payroll payable. Yeah, that means it's, 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 it's like instead of paying, payroll, 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 payable. Then- Wait. When, Debiting, like one minute, you're debiting, the pay, the adjusting entry would be debiting payroll expense 800 yeah. and crediting the pay payable 800. Payroll payable, yeah. Okay, and the reversal will be your... It's going to undo it. It's going to make it zero. So when you, it's gonna, you come back to January 1st, for example, it's going to, I tell you, the, the adjusting entry by itself will, will, will add a day to the next period. So you're going to have... When you make the report on the, the 31st, whether whichever the month or the year, we'll show you the expense that you picked up. Of a thousand. Payroll expense a thousand. Okay, let's go. If it's a thousand or it's eight hundred. Right, 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 right. Stay with the example you were doing. And then you're gonna credit expense. Okay, the example I was doing, the whole check, let's say the whole check will be a thousand. So we're only recognizing uh, eight hundred expense. 
But the, in your case, it, it could be the paycheck is twelve hundred. You recognize a thousand. It's, I want to stay with the same is. example that you were doing with the girl. Oh yeah. So I said that the the, the whole thing was a thousand. We recognized eight hundred. So your debiting payroll, the reversal is debiting payroll expense a thousand, credit expense no, no, no. Look, payable eight hundred. The reversal, QuickBooks does by itself. That means you make the adjusting, you click the box, which is adjusting, right? You go to company, general, general entries, and you click the box called adjusting entry, right over here. And you did your debit, and you, you know, let's say you picked a um, minus, let's say 531, you did your debit, uh, payroll expense, uh, $800. I'm, I'm doing that on the screen so you can see. And I'll do payroll. We don't even have such a liability, but we could we could we could create one. Oh yeah, payroll liabilities. So it's our, our here we go. Payroll liabilities, for example, right? Payroll expense eight hundred, and and the payroll liabilities eight hundred. And I press uh, what's this? Save and new. We're saving new. I don't see saving. In the bottom right corner, it's a save and new. You could do that, or at the same time, you just go press reverse. Where you see reverse? On the top, oh. over number four is the number reverse. Right, so that'll do it when you get to the next month? No, right now if I press reverse, on, and I didn't even save it yet, right? It's gonna say, you have not recorded it. Do you wanna record it now? And say so, yes. So then it's gonna record it, and right away it's gonna do 4R. 4R is the reverse, <laughs> it reverses that one. And you see it adds a date, it adds a day. Because <clears throat> that's the purpose. The purpose is you want to recognize the $800 expense and in, in then the 531. But you don't want that when you're gonna come and make a check on June, on June 3rd for $1,000, you're gonna have a $1,000 expense. It's not real. You had 800 last time. There's only 200 now, right? You don't wanna, you don't have an 800 last time plus a thousand, then you have one pay period, the thousand dollars instead of an eighteen hundred dollars instead of one thousand dollars. So the reversal sets it back to zero. So you, you're coming back to this pay period, you're, un, you're reversing the what you recognized. In this period. But but what in reality it doesn't really set it back to zero. The net effect is zero, right? If you had a five thirty one um, payroll expense of eight hundred, and on six one payroll expense of eight hundred, uh, um, you 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 credit it, so you, you wiped it out. So then, if you take a year report, you would see it's uh, you would see it zero. Right. But if looking at June one in itself. It's actually a negative 800. On today's date, if you would take a report for June 1 to June 10, you have negative payroll 800. Right. Right? Yeah. Again, if you, look, if you take a report of, of May, you have a, a positive payroll of 800. Now you have a negative of 800. Right. God bless you. I'm sorry. Yeah. And when you, uh, thank you, when you make the, ch right? So, when you make the check for a thousand dollars, all you're really going to recognize in June is the two hundred, which you're supposed to for this period. Right, because that would be a payroll expense. Right, you, you add a thousand dollar check to be a payroll expense, and then you tell cash when they write the check out is right. cash. And that's easy. so the check will be a thousand dollar cash that's going out. And the thousand dollar payroll expense will offset in this period the negative eight hundred. So the report will accurately show the two hundred dollar for this period and the eight hundred dollar for last period. Right. So that will be on June second, or that would still come up on June one. That'll be June second. No, for any from any date, June one and forward. June one, you have a negative eight hundred. No, 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 no. So the answer is the day you made the check. Yeah, that's what it be. Right. right. Yeah, which might be June third, right? So right. if you look, if you look at June one and second and two, you have a negative eight hundred. They call that the. It's not the normal account balance. Usually, a, a an expense account has a positive a negative balance. Yeah, negative. Right. It's a negative balance. But when you come to June third, you're going to have the thousand dollar check. It's going to create a two hundred dollar positive balance for expense. 
And if you add up the 800 from last time and the 200 from this time, it's a thousand. So it's all about getting the right timing in. Okay. And these adjusting entries need to be done for, like I said, office supplies, for, you have the same thing with unearned, you know, some, if you would get um, unearned revenue, you wouldn't reverse the entry. But you would make, an adjust, you would, you would make a, a, a general journal. If you got prepaid money, $1,000 in December 31 for services, you didn't earn it yet. So, you know, whether it's a cash basis or a cruel basis, you don't want to pay taxes on that money for those paid in advance. So you would make uh, a general journal entry changing the money received to earned income, to unearned income or deferred income if you hadn't done it at the moment you actually received it. Okay, so let's do those debits and credits. Which, which, debit, which debits and credits? On unearned, now you'd reverse the thing. What's the other were expenses, now you're doing revenue. Right, we, 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 we didn't have an example of unearned revenue. Oh, if we do, we, we actually have Pinnacle Stoddard. Uh, Pony Amone gave us 625. That That I'm going to do in next class. I'm going to, I'm going to do with everyone the, uh, how, we, how we go before the end of June, right? How do we make sure either Pinnacle Stoddard has to use up his money. I'm going to say, uh, I was going to say Pinnacle Stoddard, he's the worker. Pony Amone has a negative 625 receivable, which means he overpaid by 625. So either he's going to get services to use it up in June, or we're going to move that money over to unearned revenue so it doesn't show up in our P&L for this year. Okay. Okay, so that's, um, hope to answer your question. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions? I see no hands, we'll try again. Um, So I'm going to go. Hello. 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 Yeah. So I just wanted to confirm um, when we spoke earlier about the um, downloading the new link. So all I have to do is the adjustments are reversed on the payroll from today. You have to do um, the general journal entry of the adjustments and reverse. Yeah. The, but I, I see the general, the, what I sent in the email, I see is, um, yeah, it was the office supplies and the office rent. It was the, yeah. So this, this, this was the, um, I was going to review it in this class. I see. The, so this is, this is the report we made as of May 31. We said the bank needed updated financials. We went in and first we made a, a general journal number three. There were three adjusting entries. And there's actually a, a, a asterisk by the word by adjusting. So let's see you know it's adjusting entry. And in most cases, the adjusting entry reminds you that you need to make a reversal entry for the next period. In cases where there's no adjusting, it's a regular entry, you don't need to reverse it. Just a way so of- So all, uh, all of these need to be- These three, yeah, these three need to be reversed. But the actual down payment, for example, we said we did it through a journal entry. You paid $20,000, so you paid the- Wait, um, the, you're talking about the printouts that, that you emailed us? Yeah, right? correct. 
There's more than three that are. No, there's three. No, no, there's, there's, there's only three debits and credits. And then there's a second file, which are the reversal of those debits and credits. Are you referring to chapter 11? What the, uh, what's on top of the papers that you sent us? Class 13, class 12, or class 11? Who's, the, who's talking to Esther or Judy? Me, it's Judy. Because you make it clearer for her, what was the paper you're referring to? Which entries? It would give us the label on the top of that, what you sent would be clearer. It, okay, what I, what I sent out today was the journal entry three. Journal so entry three and the reversal three. 13. It's class, no, so those class, should be class 12. It was, class it was a second attachment. There were three attachments today. One was a class, and that was two pages. And then, there were, two, then there were two additional chats. Two additional there were class 12. No, no, not, not in a previous email. In the same email that said class 13, there it's were two also, other attachments. I didn't get that. In the email. It doesn't. Uh, I didn't get it. I just look, got two pages. Look again pages. in the email. That was in it's, one. Another, it's another attachment. There are two other attachments in the email. And I got class 12. That was it. No, you, they, you, you, that's class 12 as a previous class. As a previous I only email. got one. Everyone's on the same email chat, so. Look again at today's email and okay. look at your additional attachments. All right, I didn't get that, but I'll look again. Mm -hmm. I can't do it while I have my your screen on. Correct. Okay. Um, okay, so that's the, what other it's question? Esther again. Um, so um, I just because I see here it says reverse the the accounts, just the supplies, the office supplies, the prepaid rent, the rent expenses more than three times. Are you saying because it debits and credits it? Okay. Now each one has has three debits and three credits. Uh huh. Okay, and one it's just the dates that um, one is the reverse and one is the. One is, okay. You see, one is dated May thirty one, right? Right. And he's dated June first. That's the uh -huh. way it works. The whole purpose of of reversals is that when you start in the next period, you shouldn't be double counting an expense. Right. Okay, yeah, I see that now. Um, also, the um, the license number and product numbers. Do I get that from you? Then they came over. I remember. Where do your firm uh, if she's uh, if you have her email address? Okay, fine. Um, and then when I when I open up this one, I should only work like I should only work from that from the QuickBooks of twenty twenty. I should go back to my the old one? You, you could you well, if you own a 2019 software, don't uninstall it. You're gonna, you, no, you, I'm not going to uninstall the software. No, I'm saying we do it all, that company. I should only work on it on yeah, the 2020. Yeah, yeah. You, you could only do it in 2020 right now because uh -huh. once you're working in a, in a later file, later version. Right, okay. Again, you know, it's possible that by the time some, some people are going to be in an office, you know, there are some old fashioned offices that have still 2016, 15, whatever, 14. You don't buy software. You might be in an office that already has 2021. Right. No, no. The yeah, I mean, 2019 is. After the summer, you know, so someone's going to get a certification course. 2021 might be out. You know, right. we have the option of learning on a, on a current software at no cost. It's, you know, that, that's, that's, that's ideal. Okay. No, in the beginning, they said. In the beginning, they said, "Oh, if you need, let us know, and we'll provide you license." Yeah, because most, the most, when when you're creating your own file, you could do it whatever you want. But when it came, but when it came to payroll, and we realized no one could activate payroll, right. so the, the the workaround is that I give you my file, which I okay, can fine. enable. And then you need to use this 2020 software. So from now on, I'll just be using the 2020. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. No problem. Okay. Mm. Uh, Mr. Hello? Lakey, I, I'm sorry for interrupting before. Yeah. Because I thought I didn't. I thought it would be easier to understand, but I guess I was missing the page, so I apologize. Not a problem. Okay. Have a good night. Good night. Okay.
Okay, we, we still have some more time if anyone has any questions. Before class, which most likely I wouldn't be able to answer on the same day. I see someone posted in the QA, Mr. So, if no other questions, I have a joint question. I'll see you tomorrow. And we have a good night.